Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. and welcome back to my broadcast. Darling, I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. Where we discuss mental health and mental health related topics and topics relating to everything for the elderly, the youth, the teenagers, high schoolers, primary schoolers, adolescents, college students, university students, trade school students. Listen to me. Once you are a human being, once you are breathing, once you are alive, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word or a certain theme that ties everything together. You know, it gives the episode a certain feel, if you will. And the theme for this episode is nothing other than optimism. Optimism. Okay, now, stay with me for this one, okay? Because you're going to want to pay attention. Have y'all ever woken up? Right, you know, you you wake up, you're in a fresh mind space. Your your hair, your hair just your hair feel light. You feel happy. You do that good stretch, like that good, uh, that good stretch when you wake up, and you know you do your devotions if you do devotions, and you go on your phone, right? And you wake up, you're happy, you're at peace. You're you know things are like you feel like you've breathed out everything that happened yesterday, and you wake up. You go on your WhatsApp status. I just go on my WhatsApp status. And someone already wake up mad as hell. Someone already wake up mad as hell at the world. And you're saying, okay, you know what? Maybe they're having a bad day. But then one day turn into two. You on day two and you wake up and they still mad. And you say, okay, maybe they're having a bad day. Then day, day two turns to day three and they still mad. And then day three turns to day four, and day four turns into day five. Now you like, you telling me all these days, a whole week gone by, nothing good happened in your life? Nothing good happened to you? Like, n- nothing beneficial happened? Like, you, you, you just, a- every day was straight garbage? Like, nothing great happened for you? Even waking up, you didn't find joy in waking up? You didn't find happiness in waking up. You didn't find peace in waking up. Right? And for a long time, that was my mindset. I'm not going to lie to you. I was thinking like that. I was like, these people, they just wake up and they automatically model the world. That was my mindset. And it took me a little while to realize that some people genuinely do wake up and they already feel as if the life has been sucked out of them. Some people genuinely do wake up and they already feel as if the life has been sucked out of them. In this specific instance, I'm talking about people who wake up and they're, they have, they're depressed and they've been going through things mentally and they're very, they're very just like they're done with life. They don't feel as if they have the strength to go on. I'm not talking about people who choose to be miserable 24-7 who, you know, just wake up miserable looking for attention on their status. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those people who wake up and automatically feel depleted. Like they got eight hours of sleep and they felt as if they only got one minute. I'm talking about those people. Optimism is the word, and I'm going to explain to you why. So the title of this episode, Darling, Find the Mangoes in the Summertime, Mine Goes in the Summertime was the first book that I ever wrote. When I was 16 or 17, I believe I was 16, because I was December 2021. That was December 2021. Yes, I was 16. I was 16. And mine goes in the summertime, right? I know you're thinking, you know, a little fruit salad, a little, you know, a little fruit salad type thing, but when I thought of the title, I thought I love mangoes. Mangoes are a sweet fruit, and the summertime is hot, but the summer is also a time of joy and fun and peace, and it's just a great time. And so mangoes in the summertime is basically a title that says, try to find the sweetness, try to find the joy, those moments of peace in a life that's full of winters and a life that's full of coldness and 
unhappiness and distress. Try to find something that will bring you those moments of joy. That's why I chose mangoes in the summertime. That's exactly why I chose mangoes in the summertime. Because while I was writing that book, there were a lot of moments where, and a lot of things in the book were not inspired by any sense of optimism. It was inspired by a sense of finality, almost. A sense of, I don't know what else to do. I am incredibly depressed. I am incredibly depleted. This is my final avenue. I don't know what else to do. And, you know, it's so easy to tell people who are depressed and people who are going through things and people who are mentally ill or mentally unwell. Girl, just be, boy, girl, boy, it, whatever. Just be, <laughs> just be optimistic. Just be optimistic. Just look for the better. Look for the good. Just don't think about the bad. Focus on the good. It's so easy to tell people that. It is literally, that's the easiest thing in life. Like, I could literally go and tell, like, 17 random people right now, you okay, you good, you straight, you Gucci, you Fendi, you Prada, you Louis Vuitton. But it's so easy for me to say that, but it's so much harder to do. Because when you are mentally unwell, when you are depressed, when you are in that state, you feel as if you are drowning in your own mind. All of your thoughts are water and you're trying to breathe, but you don't have the space to operate. You don't have the space to, the space to move. It's like every thought is just weighing you down and it affects you on a physical level that a lot of people don't talk about. Where it hurts you to think where thinking in itself becomes a process and you begin to devalue yourself and you begin to think of yourself as less and less and as a burden. And that's the effect that depression and and mental illness can have on you. That's the effect that it can have. And when it comes down to getting help, when it comes down to seeking help for a mental illness, for get being troubled in in, the, in that type of way often it can be hard for people to find joy it can be hard for people to find the moments of joy and peace in their lives because it feels as if everything has been afflicted by this overwhelming sadness that they're encountering right it feels as if everyone has everything has been dampened by this feeling this depression that's around them like a cloud and it's just raining down on everything that's around them so optimism can sometimes seem like it doesn't seem like a possibility for some people because in their mindset in the mindset is what do i have to be optimistic about what do i have to be happy about what do i have to be joyful about and i need this to be understood I believe life to be such a blessing and the ble- and it's such it is such a blessing to be alive. I fully and honestly believe that. However, for a person who is extremely depressed and extremely suicidal, telling a person like that, you know, you are blessed to be alive and there are other people who wish that they could be alive and you know, you, you they wish that they could be like you. That person doesn't want to be alive. That person, that, that person wishes that they weren't alive. So now what? When you are depressed, when you are suicidal, when you have this extreme mental illness, when you are going through these things, life doesn't become a blessing to you. It becomes a curse. It becomes an affliction, a sickness. It's, 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 it's honestly, it's so, it's so, it's indescribable. Life becomes the thing that you want least in the world. Ultimately, what you want more than anything is to stop feeling the way that you feel. And the way that you feel and the way that people feel is caused by being alive. 
So the solution is to take away life. Remove life out of the equation. To remove life. And that is the reality for so many people. And it's the reality for so many individuals. And... No, we have people, we have suicide hotlines, we have people who say you can always come to us, you have people who say you can always come to you, you try to be the person that people can always come to, and still it's not enough. Still it's not enough. Still there are struggles that they're going through, there are things that they're going through, and listen, there is only so much help that you can give a person. There's only so much that you can do for a person. Sometimes it's literally a biological thing. Depression, I believe, it can be genetic. Depression can be genetic. Mental illness can be genetic. Some of these things are biological. So when a person is born this way, when a person is born with this illness, There's only really so much that you as an individual, that us as individuals can do to help somebody when they are going through these things. And the worst part is, a lot of people who are experiencing life, who are experiencing the ups and the downs and the around towns of life, they're not seeing the light. They're not seeing the mangoes in the summertime, the moments worth living for. They're not seeing it because they can't. So I say this to every person who is going through a mental battle, who is going through mental illness, who is struggling with their thoughts, with depression, with anxiety, with any type of mental disorder with anything, I am saying this for you and to you. It is okay to seek help. If you are having a problem finding joy, if you are having a problem being optimistic when you have reason to be, if you are having a an issue being happy, if you know that no matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does for you, no matter what happens around you, you still feel like other crap. If you know that you are going through that, it is okay for you to get help. It is okay for you to get help. Sometimes, and I'm going to say this, sometimes the type of optimism that we like to offer as comfort is not enough. That optimism that says, this is nothing, you will get through this. The optimism that says, okay, well, this is just a short little battle. It's fine. You, you, It's fine. It's nothing at all. The dismissive type of optimism. It's not enough. Sometimes individuals need more. They need actual help. The type of optimism that says, I know that you're going to get through this, but in order to get through it, you need to go through the proper channels, the proper avenues, and seek proper treatment in order to progress as an individual. The type of optimism that says, in order for you to heal, in order for you to be fully recovered, or to start recovering from what you are going through, and I believe that you can recover, but in order for you to do that, we need to get you some help. That is the type of optimism that people need. Telling someone that their problems will just push, evaporate in a puff of air. Telling someone that their problems will just go away without any type of intervention, without any type of aid, without any type of help at all, is false optimism. And a lot of times people hinge on those very words. They believe that their problems, we believe that our problems will just go away if we just leave them alone. If we don't bother them, if we don't disturb them, if we just stay stewing in our own mental illness, our own mental stew of hurt and pain, if we just stay in all of that and we just bide our time, then we will have paid our dues and we will eventually be okay. And you will have a lot of people like that in the real world today who are severely depressed 
who are severely depressed, who are severely just hurt deep down inside their head. And they were given that false optimism that said, you'll be okay if you ignore it. Not the optimism that says, you will be okay, but you need to get help. We don't give the optimism that people need. We don't give people the optimism that they need. We give them the optimism that we, that we think they want. Because we believe people want to be normal. We, people, um, no one wants to have mental illness, actually. So people want to be normal. People want to be okay. Quotes around normal. Quotes around okay. So the notion of telling someone that they need to get help, it tells them that they are not quotes around normal. You can't see my fingers, so I have to say quotes, that they are not okay. And that's why we won't tell people that they need help because you need help. What I need help for, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not insane. There is nothing wrong with me. And we neglect those people when we refuse to have the proper types of optimism with them. We neglect our roles as friends. We neglect our roles as family members because we won't have the gall. We don't have the courage. We don't have the push to say, I know you're going to be okay, but ignoring what you are going through is not the way. We don't say that. We let them bury it. We let them hide it. And ultimately, when things happen, when they are so far gone that no human being can bring them back, that no amount of help can bring them back, and they might lose their life or they lose their life, we say, oh, I wish they would have gotten help. Oh, I wish that they would have told me that they needed help. I wish, I, I, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. We cannot be afraid to tell the people that we love that they need help. We can't have false optimism with them. We can't hope that their problems will just magically disappear. We ourselves cannot be afraid. We can't have that false optimism with ourselves. We have to know when we need help, when we need mental help. We have to know when we are not okay. And it is okay to not be okay. If you are going through something, if you can't find the mangoes in the summertime, if you find the sea grapes in the winter, if you find the rocks in the winter, listen, if you just in the winter, if you in the absolute darkness, that is okay. That is okay. But that will not just go away. Your problems will not just go away if you ignore them. The things that you are going through, the pain that you are feeling, the things that you are experiencing will not just, and as much as you may want them to, they will not just start to walk away from you simply because you feel as if if you wait long enough, you're going to be just okay. It won't happen like that. It will not happen like that. And there's only so much false optimism that you can give or listen to. And there's only so much false optimism that you can believe before you eventually begin to break down. Because you're telling yourself, I told myself everything's going to be okay. So why am I not okay? I told myself that everything's going to be fine, but why am I not fine? I told myself that I'm going to move past this, but why haven't I moved past this? That is what we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves that we want something, but we, our actions do something entirely contrary to what we want. We want to be okay, but we ignore our issues. We want our friends and family to be okay, but we tell them to ignore what they are going through. The actions and the words never match up. They are not matching up. So what do we do? What do we do with that?
when it comes to finding the mangoes in the summertime, when it comes to finding moments of joy, moments of peace, moments of happiness, in times where you don't think that they exist, in times where you may not feel as if you deserve them, because that is a thing. Sometimes we don't feel as if we deserve to have happiness or to have peace. When it comes to finding those things, it's not, it, it can be very difficult. I know when there's a big mango tree on the side of our house, and typically in the summer, what I do is I get this little makeshift ladder that we have. I climb to the top of the roof, right? And I pick the mangoes. I get the mangoes. Now, I'm terrified. Now, for a, a slight bit of information for you all who do not know, I am terrified of heights. I mean, heights, me and heights don't go. If God wanted me to be in the sky, he would give me wings. You all understand what I said? Me and heights, me and heights are not similar. We are not friends. We are not cousins. We are not bros. We are not twins. Where have you been? Me and heights do not go. We, me and her, I don't like that girl. She don't like me. Me and I just don't do heights. I don't do that. But I love mangoes. So my love for mangoes outweighs my fear of heights. Now, how do I get how do I get up to the roof? Right? Like I said, I get the ladder and I place it on the side of the house. I climb the ladder, I get the mangoes, and I go about my business. In order to get to the mangoes, in order to get to the top of the roof, I needed to get the ladder. I needed something that would help me. I needed help in order to get that happiness and peace, in order to get those fruits. If I didn't get help, I wouldn't be able to get those fruits. If I didn't get that ladder, I wouldn't have been able to reach the top of the roof. No matter how much I jumped, no matter how much I waved my arms and tried to fly, no matter how much I tried to get a running head start, if I had not gotten help, if I had not gone and get that and gotten that ladder, I would not have been able to get to the mangoes. If you want joy, if you want those moments of joy and peace, if you want that happiness, if you want to feel those things, you have to be willing to get that ladder. You have to be willing to get that help. You have to be willing to get that help. What you want is all the way up there. It's up there in the sky. And you're down there and at rock bottom. So how do you think you are going to get up there if you don't get help? How do you think you are going to get up there if you don't get what you need? If you don't get the proper tools, the proper materials to climb to that point? How are you going to get there? We are not gods. We are not magical. We are not superheroes. We are not supervillains. We cannot stretch our bodies to that point. We cannot fly. We have to climb step by step to get to those moments of happiness, to get to those moments of peace. And the first thing, the first step is believing that you can get to that moment of happiness. This is where the true optimism comes in. Believing that you can and that you are able to get to those moments of happiness if you work towards it. Believing that you are capable of feeling that joy. And it's difficult. I know that it's difficult. But believing that you are capable of feeling joy and peace and love again. If you are willing to just get that ladder and begin making the first few steps. And it's not easy. It's never going to be easy. Because rock, bot rock bottom is a hard place to climb up from. And yes, you can't get any lower than that. But oh gosh, the lower you get, the more you feel gravity. The lower you are, 
the more your pro- the heavier your problems will seem, the more problems it will feel like you are, the lower you are, the heavier the world is on your shoulders. So it's not easy, but it has to be done if you want to live and not survive. It has to be done if you want to reach to those fruits, if you want to reach to that happiness, if you want to reach to that peace, if you want to reach to that joy, it has to be done. You have to begin making the first few steps. You have to believe, you have to be optimistic enough to believe that you are capable of healing, that you are capable of reaching to your true potential, your happiness, your love. If only you would put in the effort and the work. It has to be a conscious choice. And that's what makes it all the more difficult. Because when your mind state is so broken and fragmented, making the choice to get help, making the choice to be better, to do better, to know better, and to feel better, it's not an easy thing to do. It will never be an easy thing to do. But the choice still has to be made. And no one can make it for you. Listen, I always, listen, I always tell my friends, I would love for you, I would love for you all to go get therapy, you know. Oh my gosh, I would love for you all to get therapy. I always tell people in general, people I love, people I close with, I, I would love for you to get therapy, you know. Like, I really feel, like, personally, me personally, I feel like you should get therapy, you know, like, me, just me, though, just me, just me, no, no way. However, I cannot force you to get help. I cannot force you to get therapy. If I feel as if you need help, if you feel as if you need help, if I, if you feel as if I need help, you cannot force me to get therapy. You can't force me to go and talk to somebody. You can't force me to go and pray. You can't force me to go before God. I have to make those conscious choices on my own. So optimism, that realistic optimism means nothing if you don't have the action behind it. Believing that you can do something doesn't mean anything if you're not willing to put in the work. And that's what we must begin to do. We must begin to put in the work for the change that we want to see in our mental health. We have to begin to lift up, to lift ourselves up out of that pit. We have to do the work. We have to get the ladder and we have to go up step by step until we can reach up and grab the joy and the hope that we need in order to survive, in order to live. When we begin to do that, when we begin to make the choice to believe in ourselves, to hope for ourselves, when we begin to do that, that's when we'll begin to grab those fruits. That's when we'll begin to, shameless plug, find the mangoes in the summertime. Y'all see why I fit that in there? Y'all see why I fit that in there? I fit that in there, good day. That's when we'll begin to do that. So... This has been my podcast. Darling, I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And I'll see you next time.